The Force is with you, young Skywalker. But you are not a Jedi yet. How it started with house price bidding wars. How it's going rental price bidding wars. Yes, desirable rentals are flying off the market within hours. In fact, some wannabe renters are forced to check into Airbnbs or hotel rooms after repeatedly losing out. So let's explore why rent amounts are surging. And by the end of this video, you're really gonna have a good understanding as to why this is happening in America today. Hi, I'm Keith Weinhold. This is Get Rich Education. Apartment lists index shows that the national median rent so far in 2021 is up a staggering 11.4%. Understand that that's not a year over year number. That is only from the beginning of this year until now 11.4% in rental price increase. Mark Zandi, the chief economist for Moody's Analytics, and I quote, he says the entire housing market is on fire across the board from home ownership to rental, from high end to low end, and from coast to coast. And this is going on from Tampa to Memphis to California to even a relatively sleepy market like Springfield, Illinois. That's a full three hours from Chicago. Anecdotally, agents are often being quoted in the media saying they cannot find a rental place for their client, their prospective tenant. They can't get them into a rental. So this is even affecting job relocations in the United States. People simply can't find a place to live, whether that's to own or to rent now either. First of all, the dollars the diminished purchasing power, greater inflation. That's just increasing the cost of everything. That stretches affordability somewhat. And in general, we are just underbuilt with housing. The NER estimated were as many as 6.8 million housing units underbuilt, but it's so much more than that. I go ahead and put a YouTube like on this if you're already finding this pretty informative. If you're a renter or even a prospective buyer looking for a place, you probably don't like this so much, but if you've already got the home you want, or if you're a landlord, or you're probably really liking this a lot. I'd appreciate the YouTube like either way. Yeah, the NAR, the National Association of Realtors themselves, they are a group that often kind of cheerleads home ownership is what they do. But even they are sourcing this chart that shows how housing affordability has slumped. It's declined really since March. And affordability is really a measure of income and one's ability with that income to make a mortgage payment. So with this declining affordability, we can see it's often those people that are on the brink, just trying to get into the home, the wannabe home buyer, the first time home buyer, they're the ones that are increasingly becoming priced out. So said another way, house price growth is really a leading indicator of rent inflation. So to really understand why rents are skyrocketing, what we need to do first is drop back and look at house prices. And right now, wannabe home buyers are getting beat up worse than Luke Skywalker in The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are getting outbid. Uh, that was probably a bit overly dramatic. They're not getting their hand chopped off like Luke did. But getting back to rents, why are renters losing out? In fact, renters have higher salaries than they've ever had before. In fact, the average income for new lease signers in July, it hit a record $69,252. That's according to RealPage. Okay, so a lot of renters have really good incomes. Why are they losing out? The reason that today's quality renters are even losing out to these incumbent move up home buyers, people that already have their home and looking for another home. It's one that few consider. Almost no one is talking about this. And that is the fact that existing homeowners have giant equity positions because the housing prices have run up so much. So what existing homeowners can do that are looking for a replacement home, a move up home, what have you, they can just take this equity and just roll it like a huge tidal wave right into the next home, knocking down that wannabe home buyer that just gets caught up in the undertow and dragged away. Even adjusting for inflation, American homeowner equity is at an all-time high today. 
Oftentimes this might be your older person, your, your doctor's wearing person, sometimes even a boomer, you know, that's kind of like the Darth Vader in this story here. Though I never saw Darth Vader wear Dockers. But that's how they can afford to pay this extra 20K over the list price for homes. Or oftentimes you'll see in the media reports of people paying 50K or even more than 100K over the list price for a home. First timers cannot hang. That wannabe home buyer cannot keep up with that. It's like the move up home buyer already has their Death Star and they're just rolling it into another one or a bigger one. First time home buyers, they don't have any equity. Now, home equity is actually a really poor investment. Real estate investing is the best investment vehicle I know of, but just the home equity portion itself, that's actually an awful investment, but I talk about that in other videos. So it is essentially a forced savings plan for for the incumbents, if you will. So getting back to renters here, with an ongoing paucity of available homes, we look at this chart that we've looked at in previous months here, tracking the number of available single family homes townhomes and condos throughout the United States at any given time. It's come up a bit, but it's still down there pretty low. We've got this ongoing housing scarcity. Fewer buyers therefore mean more renters. Remember, you really only have two main choices when you're looking for a place to live. You can rent it or you can own it. Yes, there's living with your parents. Yes, there's living under a bridge, but we're basically just talking about either owning or renting your home. That's basically it. So this has driven up rental demand, and this is why higher housing prices and higher equity positions bring higher rents. So if you, as a real estate investor of income property, if you can navigate the annoying eviction ban and tenant wages keep up proportionally to rent increases, then you are going to be rewarded as a profiteer from having higher rents. Because just understand, if your rent income increases 10%, your cash flow might increase something like 25% depending on your leverage position because your principal and interest payment, your biggest monthly expense is fixed. That's 25% more money that you are feeling in your pocket every month. Adding fuel to the fire in all this, both rental demand and home buyer demand, is the fact that millennials are the largest generation in American history, about 72 million in age 25 to 40, depending on how you count it. So they're really in that age where it's just not cool to live with your parents and you really want to get out and have your own place. That's fueling the fire. They want their own place just as badly as Luke Skywalker wanted to leave Tatooine. These new droids do work out. I want to transmit my application to the Academy this year. You mean the next semester before the harvest? Sure, there's more than enough droids. It's only one more season. Yeah, that's what she said when the bigs and tank left. Where are you going? Looks like I'm going nowhere. Both home price gains and rent price gains reflect heightened competition for one scarce resource, and that is somewhere to live. Hey, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell here if you like information about real estate investing, real estate economics, and the wealth mindset as it applies to all of this. Thanks so much for being here, but as I like to say, you weren't here for me, you were here for you. I'm Keith Weinhold. We'll see you in the next video.